coach, as, as someone who's been in the game for quite long, mm. what do you make of how Coach Lani has come into this head coaching role and in, in recent times there's been controversial stories coming up as well, which seems to have managed the whole situation? First of all, the guy is unbelievably intelligent. He is brains, brains, brains. You never get into coaching and succeed at a young age without brains. He's genius. And unfortunately, in modern management, it's not only about the capability to do your job, to be a great technician. It's about managing the rest of the other dynamics around you. And one, one friend of mine, Roger Desa, once said, 90% of our earnings, 90% of what the coach earns, is about everything that happens around and only 10% is about what they do on the pitch. And I think Coach Rulani has mastered that. He's very calm, calculative, he sees things in time, and the wisdom and ability to respond appropriately. And I make no mistake, it's not easy to be head coach at Sundowns. In fact, any big team. But managing that is one of the primary, primary, primary objectives. You have to be very careful because whatever you say goes. And unfortunately, in modern world, what you say, gone. If you want to rectify, it gets even worse. So you got to be careful what you're going to say. Think about it before you say it. And he's mastered that. Coach, uh, obviously, you one of the people who gave him a chance. Um, not from stars. Was this apparent? That's way, that's way back, man. That's way back. He's developed into a monster. He's, he's unbelievable. And it's beautiful to see genius striving. And I don't want to start putting stories that after two, three weeks, and then they come out, it appears as if I said this yesterday, but fact remains, he's genius. And even when we worked together at Platinum Stars then with, with Freeze, Alan Freeze, it, it was just clear. And beyond anything, the hard work, the passion has just gone to another level. It's amazing. How much, consulting, sorry, how much consulting does he do obviously? Let me field in this one. I love this one. Oh, okay. You were saying, sir? Coach of the season? Please, so be it. I'm <laughs> ropey. <laughs> because there's a tendency that no things must be done based on certain circumstances. But I think he's done a hell of a great job. Let's be honest. And you can't say whether they should give it to him or not. But if his work says give it to him, you have no option, but you have to oblige. Coach, you quite the hands on. No, he's, he's here, my big brother. My apologies. Yeah, I just wanted to ask how much consulting does he do with you and Manuel, obviously? You it's very much. cohesive. It's very cohesive. It's not easy to have an environment in, in, or on shared leadership. And it needs a lot of maturity. And you can see the eight of us were seated on the bench. Already there, you feel the brains at work. And sometimes a, a confrontation that is... It's more like simmering. Even in their silence, you can feel that there's something about to clash here. So it's normal for coaches because brains is brains. And where there's brains working, there's going to be difference in opinion. But it needs maturity to merge those differences so that as it comes out, it comes out solid. But in my first year at Sundowns, and I think it has taken so long to be in front of you. Now you're asking me questions that I should have filled it in my first year. But it's okay. In my first year at Sundowns, one thing that we all agreed to, we cannot fail Sundowns because the opportunity given to us, and worse, worse, you are black people. The myth that has been sold about black people not working together, we needed to find that and kick it out of the window. Whatever circumstances, we had to stick together and work and make it work because one, we were not only an example to football. We were not an example to politics not an example to religion, not an example to business, but example to society and the world. Send a message that black people can work together. That was very important. Coach, um, when we come to club, club they see you quite a hands-on in the training pitch. How would you define your role within the club? Because, you know, that's been spoken about a lot, especially amongst the fans. It's, it's beautiful. His energy is amazing. And, and you, you cannot imagine having three, four coaches on the park. You don't do that, man. You don't want a chaos because players are watching what's happening and players have to absorb information you can imagine if i let focus based on the lenses that are here and the cell phones that are here i'm going to be a mess so it's like coaching delivering message to a player so we need to find a way of saying now how does this information go 
and I know before the end of these interviews, some of you will be saying, but why have you not been stepping up for interviews? Purely, purely because of that. There has to be clarity. There has to be order. There has to be maturity. And that happens in an environment where people are intentional and deliberate about the process. And the process itself is clear enough to have a clear definition. So there has never been any glitches. It had been unbelievably tremendous. So is this you basically... I don't know how to put it. Put it uh, anyhow. Sacrificing yourself for the good of the team. Everybody at Sundown sacrifices themselves. Just yourself personally. No, no, no. S Sundown's institutional success is there at Sundown's. Whether you look at the previous coaches and all those, the, the club itself, the president himself and his board, he's hell-bent to see things working for Sundown's. And it would be very unfortunate for people given the opportunity to come be part of that process and success. Then you want to be making yours. There's a book that I read. Um, Ego is the enemy. They speak of in success, there's innocent climb. Innocent climb, innocent climb. But as soon as you reach a certain level, then there's a me disease. That's where ego chips in. So it is also very important to have that at the back of your mind when you work that the success, the success, the success. But remember what ego is the enemy is. As soon as you reach success, now you want to make the me disease. So you got to be very careful and conscious about that. I think we're almost done. <coughs> Thank you, Manis. Uh, the, you know, I'm doing the last one, eh? Thank you. The disbanding of the co coaching uh, phenomenon, do you think it was a necessary evil? Because ever since then, the results have been unbelievable. I don't want to rephrase your question, but I wouldn't want to say necessary evil. Because by fact that I'm going to interpret that based on evil, it already puts me in a position where, okay, you acknowledge the fact it was evil. No, I wouldn't go that route. But I think it was a hell of a great arrangement from the beginning. In fact, it is the same arrangement that made a transition to where we at. Had we started otherwise, would we have been where we at? Nobody knows. But looking at how it started and how it transcended, it got solid. It's like cement. Cement starts by fluid and all that, but at the back of the side.